Hello guys, welcome to the Let's Play series of uh, Max Payne. Uh, after, uh, what, four or five months, uh, five month uh, hiatus, I'm finally doing another playthrough of this. Um, yeah, I've been looking forward to playing this game for a while. Uh, I've already played this game a bunch of times, so I know the controls and everything. Uh, but I just saw it pop in a tutorial just to showcase you guys how the, the game is p played and all that. If you guys are interested in playing it. Um, but yeah, let's, let's play this tutorial here. And... Uh, I guess I'll explain how I got first introduced to uh, Max Payne. So, the first time I've ever heard, or at least seen, or, yeah, the first time I ever heard of Max Payne was through, was when I saw like video game cases of the game back in, gosh, like back in the early 2000s when this game came out. Like, uh, uh, I forgot the, the month, but I know it came out uh, months before 9-11, so it came out in 2001. And I think I was four at the time when this game came out. So pretty young to play uh, M-rated video games. <laughs> so I wasn't quite there yet to play games like this. Um, but I did play games, I think when I was four I played games like... Uh, I think the Star Wars Episode One Paw Racing on PC, and the uh, the Legend of Zelda games, the Ocarina of Time and the Wind Waker on GameCube. But um, but yeah, and I think the only time I've ever seen or watched anything any like Max Payne related material was the. Uh, Mark Wahlberg uh, video game movie adaption, which uh, I think we all know at this point, with most or even all video game adaptions, video games adapted to movies, uh, they're pretty, they're they're really bad. I actually caught it one time with my dad because I think he's already seen the movie like God knows how many times. Um, Yeah, he's seen the, the Max Payne movie a bunch of times, and I think he said he liked it. Although now he doesn't remember what the movie's like anyway. But he said he liked it. Um, uh, he hasn't played the video game yet. Um, so he's not much... Doesn't have much knowledge of the both Max Payne 1 and 2 as I am. Although I, I've seen a review of the movie, and yeah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> Okay, try to be so first. Okay, um, so um, there are definitely some differences between the the movie and the game. Uh, it says some similarities, like the characters and the the plot. For the most part, it's a little very, very much different from the uh, video game. Yeah, and the first ever Max Payne game I ever played was, before the original two games, was Max Payne 3. And although I really liked um, that game, uh, specifically the, the gameplay of it, especially like, you know, with the movement of bullying time and, you know, the animation and all that. Um, I don't consider it a Max Payne game because it's such a... Not only is it like a departure from the rest of the Max Payne series, but it's, it's it doesn't share the same like charm or even identity as uh, the Max Payne series when uh, Remedy or even uh, Sam Lake, the, the writer for both the... Uh, for both Max Payne 1 and 2, um, is involved, so... Oh, I forgot a guy over here. Or 
where did these guys come from? Uh, whatever. But yeah, they don't share the same kind of um, identity as when uh, was in uh, Remedy was uh, made the develop the game, or when uh, Sam Blake wrote the uh, store wasn't the writer. It's still a good game, but um. I feel like if if it wasn't a Max Payne, Payne game, it wouldn't make much difference, nor would it, like, you know, not be, you know, good in any way. I think it would be better if it was its own separate story, because if you took out the character Max Payne and just made it a wholly different property, it wouldn't be much uh, controversy or even, like much complaining it still be a great game uh, in my opinion because I know um, the developers of Max Payne 3 were heavily inspired by um, by uh, the Denzel Washington movie Man on Fire which uh, I own the movie on the on the blu-ray I just haven't watched it yet so, uh, yeah I look forward to watching it again but um yeah, I, I like Max Payne 3. Uh, I wouldn't say it's as great as Max Payne 1 and 2, which I played uh, later on after after high school. Uh, I think I played Max Payne 3 was when I was uh, what, a sophomore or junior. Yeah, I guess that's it. Um, so as you saw, there's some secret rooms you can go into and and uh and find and there's also definitely some uh easter eggs like the quote on the bottom all your base are uh it's a star trek reference uh reference to star trek the next generation with the borg and all that so you'll find some easter eggs um some secret rooms um i'm not gonna get to them all but there's definitely a lot uh, of content here to uh, explore. Um, I guess that's it. We'll get to the, the game now. Um, or I'll, I'll just do one more primary thing. Uh, more uh, practice with the primary thing. Even though I'm already a little bit more of an expert on, the, on it by now since I played it so many times recently. So it has uh, some bullet time effects. Uh, the developers of um, Max Payne 1 and 2 Remedy, they were greatly inspired by um, the Hong Kong movies, uh, especially the John Woo movies, like uh, Hard Boiled and all that. But uh, yeah, but, yeah, I, I would say Max Payne 1 and 2 are like my on my list of top favorite uh, video games of all time because of uh, not only the story but also the gameplay and characters and especially the writing on Sam Lake and I think what makes these games special is um, Sam Lake's writing skills and ability and especially like his use of uh, metaphors in, in these games whether it's like you know whether it's related to something like Norse mythology or any pop not, not too much like pop culture for references like it's not not like as bad as like you know when Josh Whedon does pop culture references or any other writer other millenn modern millennial writer and all that shit but yeah uh, I think that's all I have to say about uh, my history with Max Payne there's no wasted time here let's get to the game so we completed the tutorial, and, um, thankfully like the PC uh, version, all the console versions, especially the PlayStation 2 and the Xbox versions, uh, they have a low save uh, state feature. In terms of graphics, I would say the Xbox version is much, much better than the PlayStation 2 version, although not by a lot. Uh, uh, especially with Max Payne 2 and the graphics on there are a lot better. 
or on par with the the PC games for the most part than with the PlayStation 2 version. Although with all the console versions, they have loading checkpoints, which um, which can be a little dis distracting or disrupt the flow of uh, gameplay compared to the PC version, which is all in one level without any loading checkpoints. But with the console versions, I would say probably more more than likely based on the hardware limitations, it's not all one. It's probably hard to do all in one level, so they had to do um, at least like with loading the areas anyway. So they had to do loading checkpoints, but uh, it's not too bad of a strategy if you're playing on the harder difficulties like uh, Dead on Arrival, because uh, like whenever you do, whenever you reach a loading checkpoint, it will restart the amount of limited saves you have so or it will reload the amount of limited saves you have so that's that's good uh, compared to like carboil or fugitive which i think you have uh, unlimited saves on that it's just dead on arrival where you have limited saves uh i think the same thing with new york commanded if for my ted talk <laughs> uh let's get to the game Shot was an exclamation mark to everything that had led to this point. I released my finger from the trigger, and then it was over. To make any kind of sense of it, I need to go back three years. Back to the night the pain started. I was still on the force back then. NYPD, Manhattan, Midtown North Precinct, Hell's Kitchen. So when are you coming to work for me, Detective Payne? You'd make me work undercover in some hell hole. Sorry, Alex. Michelle and the baby come first. See? My last smoke. It's bad for the baby. That's you, Max. A regular Boy Scout. See, Alex. You're still on for poker Thursday night, right? Like taking candy from a baby. Life was good. Sun setting on a sweet summer's day. The smell of freshly mowed lawns. The sounds of children playing. A house across the river on the Jersey side. A beautiful wife and a baby girl. The American dream come true. Honey, I'm home. But dreams have a nasty habit of going bad when you're not looking. The sun went down with practice bravado. Twilight crawled across the sky, laden with foreboding. Michelle, honey, anybody home? I didn't like the way the show started. They'd give me the best seat in the house, front row center. What the hell? Something ugly had been tattooed on the wall, a map of things to come. It was a poison syringe, a magic tag full of diabolical meanings.
Listen, someone's broken into my house. Call 911. Is this the pain residence? Yes, someone's broken into my house. They're still here. You have to... Good. I'm afraid I cannot help you. Who is this? Hello? Please, Michelle. Oh, baby. previously unknown designer drug, Valkyr, V. After the funeral, I told Alex I'd be transferring to the DEA. It took us three long years to get a break in the Valkyr case. Then, finally, two months ago, a dime dropper tipped us off that Jack Lupino, a mob boss in the Punchinello crime family, was trafficking. I went undercover, infiltrated the worst mafia family in New York. I came in from the cold and the dark. Outside the city was a cruel monster. I've been slowly working my way from the small time to the big fish, trying to get to the source of the drug. Alex and BB were my only contacts in the DEA, the only ones in this decrepit city who knew I was down here. BB here. Something urgent has come up with Jack Lupino. You need to meet with Alex immediately at the Roscoe Street Station. I hadn't had a face-to-face -face with Alex since I'd gone undercover. Outside, the mercury was falling fast. It was colder than the devil's heart, raining ice pitchforks as if the heavens were ready to fall. Everyone was running for shelter like there was no tomorrow. It didn't get any better when I got to the subway. The feeling hit me like a point-blank shot straight in the face. Something was not right about this. My Beretta stirred nervously under my coat, but the train doors had already shut behind me, and I was in for the ride. Next stop, Roscoe Street Station, and Alex. The station was drenched in gloom. Alex was a ghost, nowhere to be seen. I'd have to look for him. Death was in the air at Roscoe Street. I'd have to find Alex fast. Uh, I also forgot to mention that um, since it was like this was like a at the time Remedy was like a small team of developers back then, so they couldn't afford actors to model for the uh, not only for the cutscenes but also for the in-game models. Pills would hold the pain back for a while. Wasn't Jake supposed to take care of this? He and Mickey are having too much fun taking care of the cop up there. Oh, well, what's the plan? Simple. Gun down every mother-loving bastard that gets off the train. Yo!
But yeah, so the uh, the developers of this game had to use themselves, including um, uh, asking their relatives and friends to uh, uh, use them as models for the characters for the game, whether in uh, in whether uh, it's they're like in-game models or um, or for the. The, uh, I think digitally painted cutscenes. So, um, and even, uh, Sam Lake himself, the writer, he, uh, for, at least for the first game, anyway, uh, he uses himself as, uh, the model for, for Max Payne, which you can see. So, so that's actually his, uh, face that, um, they use for the model, uh, that, uh, they model Max Payne after. Uh, by the second, by the time they get to, they were making the second game, they had enough money and, uh, for the budget, anyway, to, um, hire, like, actors and so on. But, like, back then, they were a small team, and, I mean, they had a pretty big budget, but not, like, too big of a budget, since they were a small team, so they had to use themselves, which, which is kind of why I geared toward, uh, more toward the first game than the second game as like my favorite in the Max Payne series because of the no uh, I guess like the the charm and especially like the passion behind the developing development of uh, the first Max Payne. Um, I I like Max Payne two uh, for for its story. Especially some of the characters, but uh, I probably like the first one a little bit more based on its uh, charm and you know, especially like passion and all that stuff. Yeah, he's dead, all right. Hey, it's me you're talking to. What the hell? <laughs> I also especially like how the accent for these mobsters are, are kind of like the stereotypical, um, like, gangster stereotype. I mean, you, just, you can tell a little bit that they have, like, a um, New Jersey or New Yorker accent a little bit, but, um, it, it's still kind of the stereotypical, uh, you know, U's and C's and, well, not, not a lot of the time, but sometimes, uh, uh, it's not a little bit stereotypical. What the hell? So, yeah, so this is the uh, loading checkpoints I was talking about. So you'll see a bunch of these throughout, like, one chapter, at least. In the PC version, you only get, like, a loading checkpoint for... after completing uh, a chapter, so... But this is, like, the first chapter, and we're already getting, like, a loading checkpoint. Just because of the uh, limitations of the console hardware compared to the PC version. Which isn't a deal breaker, but uh, it's definitely um, left some, like, uh, very much a lot of differences between the PC version and the uh, console version. Like, uh, so, like, in this part, those two guys down there they were supposed to go through the door and you could like get some more ammo and pills there but i think unfortunately i think they cut it out due to like memory storage reasons i think but uh not too much of a deal breaker but, um i guess i also like it because uh oh I ran out of for Alex, they had ended up in the middle of a big time crime operation. I ran out of ammo. <laughs> Kiss it goodbye. Hey, ah! 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 You 
saved me, man. What's going on here? A massacre. These armed thugs appear from nowhere. We need to get help. I can make the call from the control room one floor up. Can you take me there? Sure. Sounds good. Follow me. Uh, and I think also the models they limited to just a handful. Like for this one, it's very. Please. Yeah, we're going. Jesus. For, uh, on a PC version, it's a different model compared to the this one that they're using, which I think is the same one they use for the gangsters as well. But in the game, it's an entirely different guy, and I think he's supposed to have like a black hair and a goatee or something in the PC version. Home free, this way. There you go. Ah, uh, well, he's dead. <laughs> Yeah, kind of the uh, dirty Harry or Charles Bronson effect, uh, or a curse kind of thing. So, if you're friends with Max Payne, uh, don't expect to like live past like the the first act or some shit. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I love this game so much because uh, not only for the story and the, the charm in the development of this game oh I died <laughs> but also because um, this is fun kind of uh, almost classic FPS shooter which I ah. yeah see if you're not careful then you'll definitely get hit by the bullets when you're in uh, slow motion but yeah the slow motion uh, effect is so fun it's not as fun as like uh, the other games that try to do this uh, same slow motion um, gameplay mechanic like even uh, uh, John Woo he made his own kind of game with the slow mo mechanic like uh, called a uh, stranglehold and it's not as good or fun as uh, Max Payne's uh, gameplay or slow mo mechanic. Um, I mean, it's 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 still kind of fun, but it's not as. The train lit up like a Christmas tree. Power was back on. But yeah, it's not as fun as. Um, the Max Payne games, uh, slow mo mechanics, and, or uh, as fluent as those games, anyway. Subtle. 